The Now Man Show Special Black History Month. For people who may or may not know what Stax is, yeah. everybody knows the music. I mean, yeah. it's Otis Redding, Sam and Dave, Booker T and the MGs, Staple the Staple singers. singers. I mean, the most amazing yeah. Memphis soul music yeah. of all time. Um, and what was so unique about it was the label was really a coming together of white people and black people yes. in a city where that did not yeah. happen. Yes. Absolutely not. And a number of events happened in 1967 that really transformed America and Stax. One of them was the assassination of Martin Luther King yeah. just down the street from Stax yeah. uh, at the Lorraine Ho Hotel, Hotel, which was the yeah. one place where black people and white people could swim together. Could They actually, songwriters at Stax would rent rooms to write songs in the motel there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Otis Redding's death uh, in the winter of 67. Mm -hmm. And um, Stax was actually kind of reborn then as a black owned business. Uh, the ownership changed, Al Bell uh, took over the label and it became this kind of new voice of black entrepreneurship and empowerment and then it all goes horribly wrong. I mean, it's like a Greek tragedy yeah. of a story. And even Atlantic Records, right, came in and, and somehow legally acquired the rights to well, all that music or something? They, there were some contract shenanigans that actually mm. ended up depriving stacks of all wow. of their early masters. Yeah. But, but this is what I love about music films, yeah. is that even though you have incredible soundtracks and incredible singers and artists, it's a story about race and civil rights and, yes. and a city and a time and a place. I mean, it gets into so many different dynamics of what's going on. And what you really have at Stax is a black-owned label that's now making a lot of money. Isaac Hayes that's was right. one of the biggest. He started as a kid in the neighborhood, that's right. literally a 14-year-old in that's the neighborhood right. who walked into the studio. And wasn't he the first African-American composer to win an uh, the Oscar was. for best score? He, score for Shaft. Yeah. Uh, but as Stax got more and more power, more and more money, mm -hmm. the powers that be in Memphis were not comfortable with a black owned business having wow. that much profile and that much money. Wow. And conspired, I would say, wow. without being too conspiratorial about yeah, it. Yeah. Uh, I think it really contributed to the downfall of the label. So you have these incredible stories like that uh, with an amazing soundtrack. Yeah. Um, that, that, that is a, to do films like that, I. I could do that forever. Yeah. And, and Memphis is yeah. really an amazing place. There's so much history there and so much, you know, content. Uh, I've made three documentaries in Memphis. Wow. Um, Sam Phillips and Sun yes. Records. Yes. yes. The other great Memphis <laughs> label, yeah. um, and uh, Muddy Waters, yeah. which was largely based around the Delta and just up in, in Memphis. Uh, and I've worked a lot with a writer there, Robert Gordon, who's a great M Memphis music writer. But it's such an interesting city because it's the crossroads of the north and the south and the east and the west. Yes. And it's the city that that entire region of middle America um, that everybody went to. Yes. You know, if you had talent within 300 miles, 500 yeah. miles, 1,000 miles, yeah. Yeah. you would go to Memphis. And yeah. that's how B.B. King and Helen Wolf and Johnny Cash and Elvis Presley all found their Jerry way Lee to Lewis, Memphis. Yeah. Jerry Lee Lewis can go yeah. on and on and on. Yeah. Um, but it was the mecca for, mm -hmm. for people who wanted to make it, but also not make it in a commercial sense, make it in a, though they wanted that, but that it was a city that respected weirdness, <laughs> for right. lack of a better word. That's right. You know, the individuality, I think, is the better word for it. That's, That's right. something that, but at Sam Phillips and Stax Stack, Records, were evangelical about the idea about having your own sound, your own voice, and doing something unique.